What made you want to become an artist? Oh, what made me, oh wow. I'm a son of a, a sculptor and my mom was a modern dancer. My sister is an actress and educator and my brother is a musician and educator. So um, kind of was just in the family, the family blood. And uh, I actually tried not to be an artist. I remember an undergrad and <laughs> I was like, I'm going to go study lighting design. I'm going to get my BFA. And I realized, boy, that's still an art. So um, no, all my life, I would say I just have been in, around the arts and couldn't get away from it. And I'm glad I made that decision, though. How did you get your start as an artist? Oh, wow. Well, oh, I didn't, you know, I didn't take many, uh, I didn't take many I didn't take any art classes in high school. Um, I was more into like technical theater and an actor and all that. But I would say in undergrad, my, my very first art show I was in was um, at Loveland Museum uh, up at Loveland, Colorado. And I kind of created this site-specific installation, this little room that you went into, and it dealed with senses. So each piece had to involved three or more senses so I had, uh, I had sound and sight so I had this like sound this, basically this wind going through this chamber the whole time but I thought it was a very visual piece and I later found out that this man who had uh, was hard of seeing came every day just to go in there and listen to the, the wind and so kind of made me think differently about how people view work and uh, but that was my first exhibit I would say and, 2003, so I won the Jurors Award too, so that was nice. It took, I got like a hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, what was a dream of yours when we were when you were first becoming an artist? Oh, well, I think dreams. You have to. Maybe it's still a dream. Well, there's well two two parts of the story. So, my father has a a little. In third, second grade, I wrote this little article, what I want to be when I grow up, and it was about being an artist, and I want to be, have paints and paintbrushes. But the, the last line is, but I want to then sell the work so I could take my family out to dinner. And I think that was my way of saying, Dad, take us out to dinner more. <laughs> but uh, I think actually my goal now is I would love to create art full-time as a, as a career. Right now I have two full-time jobs. so uh, But focus on that and travel the world showing people my work and having them experience it. So that's my current goal and it's probably been my goal ever since I started. But as, a, as an artist, you have that energy to just want to create and I want to continue that. Who are your greatest inspirations and role models? Um, well, there's the light and space move, movement of the probably the early to mid 60s. Um, was started in California uh, by artists like Robert Irwin and uh, James Terrell. Um, those are kind of the, the big guys in the, uh, the art scene that use light and space as an artistic medium. And so I discovered that, I discovered that movement and, um, when I was an undergrad and I went to Indianapolis Art Museum and I saw a James Terrell piece and that's what triggered, oh, I could, I could make art out of light because before I was just doing theatrical design. I enjoyed it, but I knew it wasn't kind of what I want to do for the rest of my life. So those are my inspirations, artists like that. But then it's artists like uh, my father, Chuck Parson, or all these other local artists that have been working for 40, 50 plus years on their, um, on their creative output. And um, that's just something special to see someone so dedicated to their, to their art. How did you decide to go into your particular style of art? Yeah, so back to that story. So I was studying, again my Bachelor of Fine Arts at University of Colorado in Boulder, studying line design. I enjoyed it, but the challenge with line design is you, it's a collaborative process, and I enjoy collaborations, but there are times when you have this great idea and you go to the director and say, hey, I got this great idea, you know, I want to do this, and the director's like, uh, that's great, Colin, but we're going this direction. And then it started feeling more like a job. And I was like, well, how can I kind of, I want to still say what I want to say, 
And that's when I saw James Terrell and a few of these other artists that actually cr use light as their artistic output. And I, uh, that, it kind of triggered like, oh, I can do this. I can be my own artist and be my own director. So that's kind of what really kind of triggered, I would say, my use of light. But ever since I was a kid, I remember just playing with light or being intrigued with light. It's just always been a, a fascination. It's a very challenging media as well because um, it always wants to escape. You know, light wants to go everywhere. It wants to, um, controlling it is the most difficult part, but what I love about it is the unknown. Um, even though this piece is new, I kind of had a general sense of what it would look like. There's always a fascination of the changes and how it creates the perception and the optics and the environment has to do with that or maybe even just the way you're looking at it at that moment. Can you describe the creation and the installation process? Yeah, so um, Regis University you know, asked if I would want to exhibit here. I was very excited. Um, it's a wonderful space and opportunity to have a dedicated space. I knew immediately I wanted to do something dark. I also work with mirrors a lot, but um, since it's already a controlled environment, I, I knew I wanted to create something. And then I decided I wanted to do an installation. At, at first, I didn't know if I wanted to create the, in the entire room as an environment, but I kept on being drawn to this big wall behind me. It's kind of, that's the focal wall, the main wall. And I've been playing with this ellipse shape for about a year now. And I had an exhibit at my gallery in the spring. I had a scaled down version of this piece. So it was maybe only 88 inches wide at its widest. And I thought it'd be interesting to just scale that up. First, I wanted to scale it up three times, and I realized that that would be way too big for that wall. So I ended up scaling it about 200%. And when I say scale, I do a lot of my work in vectors, so I use uh, vector programs to create it. This was uh, Illustrator, and so what I could do is use this vector, and I could scale it up very easy on my computer and then I send it off to my fabricator and we set up a meeting and we kind of chat about the challenges and what we want and every time we try to make it better so you know try to make it where this can come apart in four sections so I can get through the doors and transport it but uh, my fabricator then cuts it out of whatever material I ask they send me a big bill that's my least favorite part but then I pick it up and I have actually brought it in in sections here and put it together and my father actually came to help me. He's a, he's a good assistant. And we actually, in very, uh, you, you know, we uniformly put it up and uh, put it on the wall. And then I added the lighting components and the control controllers. I, I got lucky because there's actually a small storage room in the back of this. So that's where I hid all of the electrical components and control boxes. So that's always nice because those are always something you have to deal with when you deal with light so but then I painted it and turned off the lights and did some tweaking and it's the piece you see so even though it looks very simple there's a many steps to get to this um, this point you see here um, has your work work evolved over the years yeah I'm giving an artist talk uh, tonight but um, I would say my artist, had, the, the concept of my work has evolved, but the technology at hand and my understanding of it has evolved. And so they've kind of always followed each other. Um, and so my very early work, I actually used just static fluorescent lights. And I actually used my hand, like a hand router, to make a lot of these very simple lines. And then I discovered CNC machines, which are basically routers on computers that cut stuff. And then all of a sudden I discovered the, I use mirrors a lot and I use lasers to now cut those mirrors so you could get really precise. So instead of a router touching this material, you have just light cutting it. So there's no mechanical anything touching the, the material. So you could get really delicate type of, type of work. 
so yeah, it's evolved, and that's I guess that's the whole point of art is to continue in your practice, to continue to push, push what you do and how you do it. And um, I would say my smallest one I've made of these is three feet, but I've actually made up to 16 feet. And uh, next week I'll be installing my first public art piece in Colorado Springs, and it's two pieces that are each 10 feet by 30 feet tall, so made of steel. So yeah, it's definitely evolving for sure. And continuing with that, can you describe your work and the many different pieces you have on display in other galleries? Um, yeah, I mean, so my work, my goal is to slow the viewer down. So you go to a, you go to a typical gallery museum, there's all this wonderful work, and I'm as guilty, and we look at it, and you try to see as much as you can, and we're just moving at a very fast pace, so I really try to slow the viewer down. And I like, I like to, my work to speak about the light and the space and the environment and shapes and geometrics. Um, those all kind of combine. So that's always been kind of my path with my work. And I started, other than Loveland Museum, I then uh, I was, was a member at Pirate Contemporary Art. It's on Navajo Arts District. It's a co-op that's been there for 35, 40 years. And so a co-op's where you pay a small fee and once a year you get an exhibit. So much like this space, I get an empty room and that really pushed my, pushed my practice. So once a year I started off slow with making these boxes with fluorescent lights that didn't move. And then I start getting computers and machines to cut out these more int intricate shapes. And then I introduce color changing LEDs where now these shapes are starting to ma manipulate. And then I started working with acrylic um, to cut that out instead of just wood. Um, and then I started something more like you see now where you really start to remove a lot of the uh, components and just have this minimal shape. And I've I introduced ge geometry in my work a lot because I think light and geometry have a nice push and pull with each other. They're kind of husband and wife or brother and sister, or however you want to say it, but um, yeah, so, but I have work, uh, I've, like I said, uh, my first public art piece at Pikes Peak Art Center, uh, shown at University of Denver, kind of shown uh, the McNichols building in Denver, I've shown a lot of places in Colorado, my goal, my next step, I think, in my career is to start showing more outside of the region and the state and travel. Why did you choose to display only one piece here at Regis? Um, you know, I think Regis, uh, we have, we're very object, you think of art, you think of that painting, that picture with the frame, this object that's on the wall, and you have a series of them, and I've, I, my last exhibit I had that, and I kind of really wanted to do a site-specific piece, and I wanted to do a large piece, but with something this big, kind of takes over the room and I could have incorporated a couple smaller pieces maybe in the back but I thought they would actually interfere with this piece I want I want the focal point to be this think of the moon if we had two moons it'd be pretty cool but I, maybe there would be a moment where it'd be like which moon do I look at so <laughs> I don't know <laughs> so that maybe but I would say I just wanted the focal to be on this big piece rather than a lot of these little individual objects and I think it's something that maybe the students and staff and faculty of Regis might enjoy is kind of this, this space they could go and contemplate or relax and it's kind of a spiritual uh, getaway. Um, so yeah, that was kind of one of my goals with this exhibit. What do you hope people take away from your artwork? Like I said, it's hard to know what everyone, I think everyone, sometimes people see this way more literal. I see a giant I don't know, eye. It, it could look like an eye, and I can see why they say that, and I have no problem with that. Um, I think I want them to walk away with 
the, oh, I didn't know that something like that could be art. That's interesting. Why, why, am I, why do I like that? Or why do I not like this? And start to ask those questions. Artists, I think one of our main goals is to ask those questions. We always try to answer them, but art always t continues just to ask further questions. And actually, I, I think that's why science and art are always related. It's just that there's never, there's always another question and then another answer and so forth. So I hope people walk away and um, maybe feel more relaxed but maybe they could be more confused. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I would say my art is, I want, them, it, I want it to intrigue. Yeah. Yeah. So my final question for you is, do you have any advice to, for any aspiring artists? Yeah. Um, I, you know, we've all heard of the suffering and starving artists. I, I disagree with that. You could be that artist that has angst and all that, but, um, and our culture needs to change this, not only art, artists, but artists have to help change this. But um, art has to be looked at as a profession and as a career. Um, when I tell people I'm an artist, a lot of times they're like, well, what else do you do? And I do have another job to help with my art career. Luckily, it's involved in the arts, but I would say you need to look at it as a career. If, you're, if you tell me you're an artist, you need to present yourself as an artist. That's not mean that you can't have fun or talk with your hands a lot. It means you, you just have to, like any other career, put your best foot forward and present your work and continuing to try, uh, try to grow your career. Um, and, um, but also to have fun at it and to continue to, just to create. You're not gonna make art if you don't create. You just need to create. I always tell people, what are you creating? What's your next project? What's the next thing going on in your life? And uh, you have to have that passion, so. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.